Today we're going to be talking about piecewise defined functions in this lesson. Uh, so we're going to be able to graph and interpret piecewise defined functions, as well as when given a graph, be able to write the equation of the piecewise function. So we need to know what a piecewise defined function is first off, and then we're also um, going to um, include, we may, we may be able to include a, what a step function is. All right, so first, how do we model with a piecewise defined function? So a piecewise defined function has different rules for different parts of its domain. So essentially, for different x values, um, the function rule changes. So we use a curly bracket for piecewise defined functions to indicate the different parts of the function in different parts of its domain. So here's an example of a piecewise defined function. So notice that you have three different rules. So you have this rule number one, this is rule number one. This is the second rule. And then this is the third rule. And, and you have different conditions. So these are your conditions. Condition one, condition two, condition three. So those are three different parts of your domain. So the function varies depending on what x values or what domain you have. All right, so let's look at an example. So Alani has a summer job as a lifeguard. She makes $8 an hour for up to 40 hours each week. If she works more than 40 hours, she makes 1.5 times her hourly pay, or $12 per hour. So this is known as overtime, generally. So for each hour that you work over 40 hours, you get $12 an hour instead of the eight. So how could you make a graph and write a function that shows Alani's weekly earnings based on the number of hours she worked? So we went ahead and uh, actually wrote down the table of results. So notice that if you work 20 hours, then 20 times eight will give you $160. And if you work $25, 25 times four is gonna give you $200. Now, if you work 40 hours, then 40 times eight will be 320. And then if you work, let's say 45 hours, well then 45, so you're gonna make the $320 then plus the extra five hours. All right, so let's show you that. So for at $8 an hour for 20 hours, we got $160. At $8 an hour for 25 hours, $200. $8 an hour for 40 hours is $320. Now, if we had 45 hours that we worked, well, we wanna basically subtract uh, the overtime, the amount of time that we have, and that'll give us our overtime of five hours. So we got five hours overtime at $12 an hour. That's, a, that's actually $60. And so if we add it together with the 320, we get 380. All right, so let's, what happens if we worked 50 hours? Well, at $8 an hour for 40 hours, we got $320. At $12 an hour, for our overtime, so this is to calculate our overtime, so we got 10 hours overtime. 10 hours times 12 is gonna give us $120. Then we go ahead and add it to the 320 and we get $440. <clears throat> All right, so that's how you calculate the amount of money that we make based off of overtime or based off of our normal standard hours. So we need a rule for both of these. So if X is the number of hours worked, then for the first rule, we know that uh, if we work X amount of hours, then we multiply the amount of hours times eight, and that'll give us how much money we make. So this is only valid when X is between zero and 40. So basically when we're not working overtime, we're making $8 an hour times however many hours we, we work. And that takes care of this first part. Now when working overtime, what we do is we take the amount of time we spent for 40 hours, so this part is for 40 hours, the 320, and then we add the amount of overtime. So this is, so we make $12 an hour times the extra amount of overtime that we add, the, the extra amount of hours that we worked. So if you notice in the arrow, uh, $320 represents the 40 hours that we made, and then for the box part, that's the $12 an hour times the extra amount of hours that we're working. And that's our general rule. So that takes care of the second part. So we got our two rules for different parts of our x. 
so we can make our piecewise function. However, before we actually um, do the second part, I'm going to simplify, remember the p of x equals 320 part plus 12 times x minus 40. We're gonna actually simplify that a little bit. So we're gonna distribute the 12 uh, inside the parentheses. If we do that, we get 12x and then 12 times 40 is 480. And then we're gonna go ahead and combine these like terms and we get um, minus 160. All right, so now we can actually go ahead and write down the rule. So the first rule was 8x, right, which was when we were working the standard number of hours. And the second rule is the overtime. All right, so now we can go ahead um, and notice that, we, uh, that this is a piecewise function with different rules for different x values. So now let's go ahead and graph the uh, the standard hours part. So for the first rule, which is in red, uh, we graph the points and then we connect the line uh, for those points. For the second part, when we're making overtime, notice that uh, in green we have different points and notice that our slope is different because we're actually making more money uh, when we're working overtime. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try this problem first. All right, so we're using the same example um, as we did last time. So we're using the same piecewise function. This time they're asking, how much does she make if she works 37 hours? Well, notice that 37 hours is between zero and 40, so she's not working overtime here. So therefore you can use the first rule uh, which is 8x, so 8 times 37 is going to give you $296. <clears throat> now for the second part, uh, she's working overtime, so she's working over 40 hours. So if you plug it into the function, you're going to plug it into the second one, so x is going to be 43, so you get 12 times 43 um, minus 160. <clears throat> And then if you did the math, you're going to get 516 minus 160, which is $356. And that's our solution. All right, so let's look at another example. So this time we want, we're given the piecewise function. We want to be able to graph it and determine the domain and range. We want to also determine whether it increases or decreases and where, what intervals. So a quick note here is that a bar underneath the inequality means that you have a filled or a closed point, which is represented by a solid dot, solid filled dot when you graph. No bar underneath the inequality or open means that you have an open point or a hole, which is represented by this, just a circle that is not filled. So in this case, we're talking about if you have a bar underneath this inequality, then it's going to be a hole. If you don't have a bar underneath this inequality, which this one doesn't have a bar, it's going to be a hole. <clears throat> All right, so continuing with the first rule. So we're, we're going to be focusing on the first rule, which is 4x plus 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the endpoints of negative 10 and negative 2 into the table. Okay, so notice those, those are my values. So I'm interested in how what the values are for those two numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in those two numbers into the function. So I get 4 times negative 10 plus 11, which is going to give me negative 29. And then if I plug in negative 2 into the function for x, then I get 4 times negative 2 plus 11, which is 3. So therefore, my coordinates here are negative 10, negative 29. And notice that it's closed because we have, an equal, we have a bar here underneath the inequality. And for the next coordinate, we have negative 2 and 3, which is open because we do not have a bar underneath this inequality. <clears throat> All right, so now we can go ahead and plot in the red points on the graph and connect them as such. So notice that this, this here was the hole because it's open and this here is closed. Right, so now let's do the second part. So we're interested in the second um, uh, function here, which is over here on the table. So now we're interested in plugging in negative two and two into the function, so which I have those two here. I'm also 
uh, introducing another point between negative 2 and 2 which is 0 and the reason I'm doing this is because this is actually a complicated looking graph and the more points I have the better so generally you're, you don't have to just use the two points uh, I would suggest using more than two points especially if you have a more complicated function and this is actually more complicated because it has the squared on it so we know it's gonna be a parabola looking shape either that or that and so we need more points All right, so then we're going to go ahead and plug it in. So we plug it in negative 2 in for x. And so we get negative 2 squared, which is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Plug it in 0, you get 0 squared minus 1, which is negative 1. And then plug it in 2, you get 4 minus 1, which is 3. All right, so then if you put, the put them as coordinates, we got negative 2 and 3 for the first one. 0, negative 1 and then 2, 3. So notice that negative 2, 3 is closed um, because of the equal sign for the inequality, you know, right here. And then 0, negative 1 is closed only because it's, it's within the coordinates. If you're within the coordinates, then we say closed. And then 2, 3 is also closed because of the inequality here with the equal sign underneath. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and plot the coordinates and connect them with a parabola, a curve as such. Now let's look at, we're going to be looking at the third uh, function rule, which is x plus 1. Uh, again, we're going to choose the endpoints of 2 and 10, here and here, and then we're going to plug it in. So 2 plus 1 is 3, 10 plus 1 is 11. All right, so then we have our coordinates, which are 2, 3, which are open, and then for 10, 11 is closed. 2, 3 is open because uh, there's no inequality there's no uh, equal sign on the inequality for 10 11 there is an equal sign underneath there so it's closed all right so then we're going to go ahead and actually graph those and plot uh, plot them and then connect them with a line so there's our line <clears throat> all right so what we're going to do is uh, we i just copied and pasted the graph on the right hand side and we're going to do the range and the domain uh, and such. So we want to determine the range, so we're going to calculate the y values that correspond to the minimum and maximum x values on the graph. So these values are at the endpoints of the domain. So at x equals negative <clears throat> uh, 10 and 10. So if you look at here, this is x equals negative 10, which is that coordinate right there. And then x equals positive 10 is this coordinate right here. So we're going to plug it in. So if we uh, plug it in to the function, when x is negative 10, well, that's just the first function rule. So plug it in there, you get negative 29. Or you can actually look at it from the graph, because we already made the graph, and that's going to be at negative 29. All right, now when x is equal to 10, we're using the green uh, function rule. So the green function rule was x plus 1. So plugging it in, we get 10 plus 1 is 11 or you can use the coordinates here, which that's going to be at 11. So our range is between negative 29 and 11 for the y values. And they're closed because of the filled uh, dots. So therefore, uh, we can also write it as negative 29 to 11 with brackets. All right, so now for the domain, the domain is between negative 10 and 10, as we mentioned earlier, because it's between these two x values. All right, or we can say brackets negative 10 to positive 10. Now we're looking at increasing or decreasing now. So for the function, it's increasing when x is negative 10 to negative 2. So notice when x is negative 10, the, the function starts down here. Um, when x is negative 2, which is over here, the function is still increasing up until that point. So between these two uh, x-coordinates, it's increasing. It's also increasing between these two x-coordinates, which in this case is at x equals 2 and x equals 10. So therefore, um, I have my two, my two solutions, or my two parts for the increase, which is between negative 2 and negative 2. Union, this means um, that symbol means union, which means or, you're combining the two answers, 0 to 10. All right, and then the function is decreasing 
from negative 2 to 0. <clears throat> Um, so that's this part right here. So between x is negative 2 up to this part, so between these two x values, uh, it's actually decreasing. Or we can say negative 2, 0. Also, I forgot to include uh, this part of the graph. So let me include this part for the solution. So it's also increasing. So when I said increasing from 0 to 10, that actually it's actually increasing from this point to this point. When x is 0 to x is 10. So it's also increasing from 2 to 10, but it's also increasing from 0 to 10, which is why I included the 0 there. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try the problem first. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the first problem. So looking at the first part, we wanna uh, remember that we wanna evaluate each of the functions individually. So let's look at the first function. So let's look at two x plus five first. So evaluate it when x is negative six, as well as when x is negative two. So let's look at the negative six part first. So we're plugging in negative six into the function and we get negative 12 plus five or negative seven. And uh, this, this means that our coordinates are negative six and negative seven. Now it's closed because there's an equal sign underneath the inequality right there. <clears throat> All right, so then for the, first, so for the second endpoint here, negative two, you're gonna plug it in and we get one, which means our coordinates are negative two and one and it's closed because of the equal sign underneath the inequality. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and plot those two points, connect them with a dot, like such. Now let's, now let's focus on the second function rule. So evaluating this second function rule, we're gonna be using negative two first. So plug in negative two into the function, you get two times negative two squared minus seven. Negative two squared is four, four times two is eight, eight minus seven is one. So our coordinates are negative two, one, and it's open because if you look at the inequality, there's no um, bar underneath. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug in one into the function. So we're gonna evaluate when x is one. Plug that in there. So you get uh, two times one squared minus seven, which is equal to two minus seven, which is negative five. And those are our coordinates, one comma negative five. And it's open um, as mentioned earlier because there's no um, bar underneath the equal sign. All right, so if we can, uh, so we need to actually do more, one more point. And the reason I know to do one more point is because this function is kind of complicated because of the squared. So that squared is actually making, making it more complicated because it has the shape of a parabola, like that or that. So we need to include more points. So I'm gonna include one more here for completion. So I'm gonna evaluate it when x is zero. I chose zero because zero is actually between negative two and one. So if I plug in zero, into the function, then I get two times zero squared minus seven, which is two times zero minus seven, which is negative seven. So our coordinates are zero comma negative seven. And it's closed in this case, only because it's, I chose a number that is between those two numbers. All right, so now we can go ahead and plot those uh, points and then connect them. So this, these are our coordinates. And then notice that we have the U shape for the parabola. All right, so now let's look at the third uh, function. So this time we're interested in this third one. So we're gonna plug in the first endpoint, which is one into the function for X. So that's gonna be negative four minus one, which is negative five. And it's closed because of the equal sign underneath the inequality. So the coordinates are one comma negative five which are closed. Now we're looking at the second endpoint of three, which by the way is closed because of that equal sign. So plug in x equals three into the function and you're gonna get three squared, which is nine. Uh, nine times two is eight, 18, 18 minus seven is 11. So our coordinates are three comma 11 and it's closed. 
Now, this is not a complicated function. This is actually just a line. So I can just choose those two points and uh, connect the dots. So that's going to be now. So if we connect those, plot those dots, and then connect them with a line. And that's our graph. All right, so now let's look at our domain. So if, if we look at this, we have x equals negative 6 for this point right here. And we have x is equal to 3 uh, for this point right here. So if we, if we were to look at the graph, well, the graph is between those two x coordinates. So our domain is negative 6, 3. Now for our range, remember our range is bottom to top. So if we if we, we know that the function starts from the bottom down here when y is equal to seven, or rather negative seven, and it goes all the way into the top until y is equal to uh, about eleven. So therefore between these two, between negative seven and eleven is our solution. So negative seven to eleven. And we include it because they're filled here and here. This is actually technically part of the graph right here. So uh, right here. So this is going to be at 11. So negative 7 to 11. Now let's look at for increase. So if we're looking at increasing intervals, well we know it's increasing here and it's increasing here and this part. <clears throat> so therefore what we're going to say is, well it's increasing when x is between when x is between negative 6 and negative 2 between those two x values, negative 2 and negative 6. So from negative 6 to negative 2, it's increasing. In addition, it's increasing when x is at 0 from there to here, rather, when x is 3. So that's our interval. So our interval is increasing from negative 6 to negative 2, or, which is the union symbol, from 0 to 3. All right, so for our decreasing interval, well, we know it's decreasing down here in this part uh, between what x coordinates? Well, it's between negative 2 and actually 0. So it's actually decreasing over this part of the graph, over that range of x values. So therefore, it's decreasing from negative 2 to 0. All right, so let's look at the second part, the second graph. So we're going to focus on the first uh, function rule, which is 3. So evaluate 3 when you plug in x is negative 4. Well, it doesn't matter if you plug in negative 4 in there, you're still going to get 3. So therefore, our coordinates are negative 4 and 3. And it's open because there's no um, bar under the equal sign. Now we're going to evaluate 3 when we plug in x is 0, which, by the way, is closed because of that equal sign. If you plug in 0, you're still going to get 3. So we got 0, comma 3 which is closed. Now we can actually uh, plot and connect those together as such. So we got our open and we got our closed. All right, so we're gonna evaluate the second rule when x is zero. So plugging that in, we get uh, just zero. So if you plug in zero into x, you're gonna get zero. So therefore, our coordinates are 0, 0, which, by the way, is closed because of that equal sign underneath there. Now we're going to plug in x equals 2, which, by the way, is closed because of the equal sign there. So now if you plug it in, if you plug in 2 into there, you're going to get negative 2. So therefore, our coordinates are 2, comma, negative 2, which are closed. Now this is just a line, so we can go ahead and connect those two by a straight line like this. All right, now we're considering our third function, uh, three, 3 minus x, our third rule. So we're going to plug in x equals 2, which by the way is open because there's no bar underneath there. So plug it in 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. So we got 2 comma 1, which is open. Next we're going to plug in 4, which by the way is open because there's no bar underneath the inequality. So through plugging in 4, we get 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. So we get 4 comma negative 1, which is open. Now we're interested in plotting those points and connecting them, like such. All right, so we got our graph. Uh, now let's find our domain. So if we look at here, we're scanning the function left to right. 
So that's our first x value there, right? And it continues and continues, 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 continues all the way up till x equals four. So between four and negative four are my x values. So therefore our domain is negative four to four. Now let's do our range. So notice that our bot we're going bottom to top. So we have this part of the range, which is at y equals negative one. All right, then we scan, we scan, we scan, we scan, we scan, we scan to the top, and then notice that we have this valley right here, which is at y equals equal to one. Notice that there's a gap here so we don't have any y values there. So basically we, we have a gap there and then we only include this y value here and that y value is a y value of three. So essentially we got all the numbers between negative one and one and we have a gap here. We have a gap of no, so no y values there and then we just have three. So therefore our range is between negative one and one or we have the y coordinate of three. Now let's look at our increasing and decreasing intervals. So if, if we look at the graph, notice that it's not increasing at all. It's actually constant here, it's decreasing here, and decreasing here. So there are no increasing intervals, so therefore um, none. Now it's decreasing for the last two parts of the graph. So it's decreasing when, uh, between here and here, which is an x value of zero and an x value of two. And then it's decreasing again from two when x value is when x value is two to x value is four. You know, from there to there. So we're gonna say it's from zero to two and then from two to four. So that's our decreasing interval from zero to two or from two to four. <clears throat> All right, you can also say uh, from zero to four here. But the reason I broke it into two pieces is because of the fact that there's two different graphs. But you can also say from zero to four. So we can also say this is from zero uh, to four technically. But I would, I would uh, you know, break it down like this just to be safe. All right, so let's look at example three. So writing the rule from the graph. So given the graph, we wanna be able to come up with the function rule that defines this. So what is the rule? So notice that there seems to be three pieces to the graph. So we got A, we got B, and we got C. Uh, we need to find the domain of each segment. <clears throat> All right, so notice that uh, we, need the, we need the graph to locate points on the line to find the slope. And then we need to use the slope intercept form to find the equation of each of these lines. So we're gonna break it into the three segments. So looking at the domain A, um, notice that the graph is between negative two, uh, it's actually between, yeah, this is actually the value negative two. So it's between negative two and up to this point, which is actually one. And notice that there's a hole here, so we're not gonna include that. And then there's a, this is closed, so we're gonna include that. So it's between negative two and one. All right, so for, um, so this is the arrow showing you this is uh, actually open because of that. Now we need to actually find the slope here. So the coordinate for this for this a right here for this for this point here is actually uh, negative two and um, negative ten. Sorry about that. This should be uh, negative ten right here. All right, and then the coordinates of here are one, negative one. So we're actually gonna be using both of those coordinates, um, negative two, negative 10, and one, negative one. And we're gonna plug it into the slope formula right here. So if we do that, we get this. So negative one minus negative 10 is nine, one minus negative two is three. All right. <clears throat> So now looking at the segment for B, for B, notice that it starts from here, which is at an X value of one, and it's, a, and it's actually uh, 
a filled in dot. So we're going to close, close it. And it starts up till here, which is an x value of 5. And it's closed, so we use the brackets. And that's our answer for the domain. All right, and then notice that this coordinate is 1, 4. This coordinate is 5, 8. So we're actually going to be using those two coordinates and plugging it into the slope formula. So remember that this is y2 and this is y1. That's x2 and that's x1. So that's how we plug it into the formula. All right, so then once we plug it in, um, we get our slope of 1. Now let's look at segment C. So the segment C starts from here to here, which is an x value of 5, and x value of 8. So what we do is I'm going to actually leave this open only because it's already closed for B, so I'm going to open it for C, comma, and then this part is clearly going to be closed for C, so I'm going to put 8. So that's how we get this domain. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to be using the coordinates here. So actually the coordinates for C that we're going to be using are 5, 8, and then the coordinates here, which are 8, comma, 8. So that's how we get those two coordinates. So then we're going to plug those into the slope and get our slope of 0. All right, so I went ahead and summarized what we did for segments A through C, the domain as well as the slopes. So we're going to focus on part A, on A first. So for A, we're going to be using, we're going to pick a point. So we're going to, let's use 1, negative 1, and then the slope of 3. If we do that and plug it into the slope-intercept form, then we're going to plug in y is negative 1, x is 1, and m is 3. So if we do that, we get negative 1 equals 3 times 1 plus b. So negative 1 equals 3 plus b. And then we're going to subtract 3 on both sides. And so we get b is negative 4. Now we're going to take the b equals negative 4, and we're going to plug it into the slope-intercept form. So if we do that, and in this case, I just replaced y with f of x. Uh, and notice that the slope is 3. So I plugged in the slope of being 3 we get 3x minus 4. So this is where the b went. The b went to the negative 4. All right, so that's our first equation. So for our segment b, um, we're going to choose any of these two points. So I'm going to choose this one. And then we know that our slope is 1. So we're going to be using that, plug it into slope-intercept form. <clears throat> so we got our 1. We got our x and we got our y. So plugging it in we get 4 equals 1 times 1 plus b. So we got 4 equals 1 plus b. Subtracting 1 on both sides gives me b equals 3. So again plugging into you know y equals mx plus b. Well we know our m is 1. Uh, x is just x, y is just y. We actually call y f of x. And then our b is 4, uh, or our b is 3. All right, so two equations down. We need one, uh, one more to go. So let's choose the uh, points 5, 8, and then with a slope of 0. Plugging it into slope-intercept form gives me 8 equals 0 times 5 plus 8. Again, that's your 0, 5, 8. So doing that, I guess, gives me 8 equals 0 plus b, or b is equal to 8. Again, plugging this, this in back into slope-intercept form leaves me with just y, but our slope is 0. So let's plug it in. I get y equals, y is the same thing as f of x, so y is equal to 0 times x plus 8. In this case, 0 times x is just 0, so that goes away. So you get uh, y equals 8, or f of x equals 8. All right, so now we got our equations. I went ahead and summarized our domain and our equations. So if we pl plug this into the rules, well, we have the negative 3x minus 4 going here for our domain. 
we've got our function for x plus 3 and our domain and then we got our function y equals 8 and then our domain and that's our final answer for our piecewise function all right go ahead and pause the video and try the problem first All right, so I went ahead and we're going to focus on the first part, part A. And notice that I, I wrote the equation for slope here so that we can use it. So let's look at segment A first. So we got, we want to pick some endpoints here. So notice that this coordinate here is negative 5, 7. And this coordinate here is negative 2, 7. So I went ahead and picked out those endpoints. Notice that this, this right here, these are both closed. So this and this are both closed because of the dots. All right, so plugging this into the formula for the slope, we get um, zero. So now that we know that slope is zero, let's pick one of these coordinates. Let's pick negative two, seven, and we're gonna plug it into y equals mx plus b. So seven is y, negative two is x, and then m is gonna be zero. So we plug that in, we get seven equals zero times negative two plus b which means that b has to be 7. So now we're going to plug in the slope of 0 and b equals 7 into y equals mx plus b. So we just got y equals, and then m is 0, uh, x is just x, and then b is 7. So our equation is y equals 7. Now this is only valid between when x is between negative 5 uh, and negative 2. And that's because those are our x coordinates for our points that we picked, between negative 5 and negative 2. So therefore, we write it like this. <clears throat> All right, so now for segment B, uh, we're gonna pick uh, these two endpoints here and here, which are the negative two, seven, and then the three comma two. So if we do that and plug, that in, plug, plug it into the slope formula, we get um, negative one. All right, so if m is negative one, let's pick one of the points, let's pick three, two, and plug it in uh, to y equals mx plus b. So again, x is two, y is three, and m is negative one. So we plug that in, we get two equals negative one times three plus b, which means that negative one times three is negative three. And then we're gonna add three to both sides, which means b has to be five. So now we're going to plug in m equals negative 1, b equals 5 into mx plus b. So we got b and we got negative 1. And we get, we get uh, y equals negative x plus 5. Now this is only valid uh, when x is between negative 2. Now we're going to say that uh, when x is negative 2, it's actually open. We're going to say that it's open because it was closed for segment A. So if it's closed for segment A, then it doesn't make sense to close it for segment B, so we'll just say that it's open. Uh, and then when x is equal to 3, which is clearly closed because of the solid dot, you know, there. <clears throat> Alright, in that case, if we plug put it together, we get x is between negative 2 and 3. Notice that it's closed for 3 and it's open for negative 2. All right, so now we went ahead and um, I just want to summarize uh, segment A and segment B. Now our job is to find segment C and finish it up. So for segment C, we're picking uh, these two endpoints. So that's this coordinate four, five, and this is the coordinate six, nine. So plugging this into the slope formula, uh, we get nine minus five. So we subtract these two Y coordinates, subtract these two X coordinates, so nine minus five, and then six minus four. So that gives us a slope of two. So the slope is two, let's pick uh, four or five as our point. So that means that five goes in for y, four goes in for x, and two goes in for m. So if we do that, we get five equals two times four plus b. Oh, I apologize, make this correction right here. So that should be uh, five. 
So if we went ahead and subtract the 8 on both sides, we're going to get b is, this should say um, negative 3. So 5 minus 8 is negative 3. <clears throat> All right, so I went ahead and make the, made the correction uh, for the, uh, the number here. So b is actually negative 3. All right, so now that we know that m is 2 and b is negative 3, we can plug it into y equals mx plus b. So again, m is 2, b is negative 3, so we get y equals 2 times x minus 3, or y equals 2x minus 3. So this is only valid when x is between 4 and 6. So that's because our coordinates here. So this is between four, which is open by the way, because it's not filled in. That's just a hole right there. And when X is uh, actually six, so that's over here when X is six, which is closed because it's filled in there. So therefore X is between four and six, closed for six because of that equal sign and open for four. All right, so then we can go ahead and plug it in. So now, now we know just a summary of our equation, and we're going to put this in a piecewise function as such. So our piecewise function is 7 when x is between negative 5 to negative 2, negative x plus 5 when it's between negative 2 and 3, and 2x minus 3 when x is between 4 and 6. All right, so for part B, uh, again, starting from segment A, we're going to pick some endpoints here. So that's this endpoint there. And then this other endpoint is here. And this is open. And then this first one is closed because the first one is filled, the next one is not. So plugging this into the slope formula, we get uh, 2 minus 3 over negative 2 minus negative 3, which is going to be negative 1 overall. So now we know the slope is negative 1. We're going to pick this point, negative 2, 2. And then, so we're going to plug in 2 for y, negative 2 for x, and negative 1 for m. So plugging this in, 2 equals negative 1 times negative 2 plus b. So 2 is equal to 2 plus b, so that means b has to be 0. So now we know m and b, we can plug it into mx plus b, and we get y equals negative 1 times x plus 0, which means that y is equal to negative x. Now this is only valid when x is between negative 3 and negative 2, because that's the, uh, the coordinate that it's between. Uh, and we said that negative 3 was closed, we said that negative 2 was open earlier. So we plug this in like such, negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than negative 2. Now let's focus on segment B, so we're going to pick these two endpoints, this one and this one. So again, this is when x is between negative 2 and x is between 1, and this is actually going to be closed, and this one's going to be open because of you know the hole here and then the dot here. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and use those two points and plug it into the slope formula. So we get um, 0 for the slope. So if this, the slope is 0, let's pick one of these points, 1, 1 plug it into y equals mx plus b. So we get y is 1, x is 1, but m is 0. So we get 1 equals 0 times 1 plus b. So we get 1 equals 0 plus b, so b has to be 1. Now we can plug in m is 0, b equals 1 into y equals mx plus b. That's our b, um, 0, and we get y equals 0 times x plus 1. So the equation is y equals 1. And again, as we've mentioned earlier, it actually is between negative 2 and 1, closed for negative 2, open for 1. So we represent that as such. So again, summarizing the three distributions, uh, we have to put them in the piecewise <clears throat> function. I actually haven't shown you how to get this part yet, so we're actually going to get to that part now. So for segment C, uh, we need to pick the endpoints 1, negative 1, and 2, 3. So again, that's these two points here, and they're both closed. So plugging this into the slope formula, we get a slope of 4. So when the slope is 4 and the point is 1, negative 1, let's choose this point 
you can choose any of the points that you want, but that's the one that I'm choosing. Plug it into mx plus b, so we get negative 1, 1, and 4 for m. So we get negative 1 equals 4 times 1 plus b, so negative 1 equals 4 plus b. So we got to solve for b here, so we're going to subtract 4 on both sides. That gives us b as negative 5. Now we can plug in the slope of 4 and b is negative 5 into the slope intercept form. So we get y equals 4 times x minus 5 or 4x minus 5. As we mentioned earlier, x is between 1 and 2 and it's closed for, it should actually be closed for both of them. So uh, this should say closed. So that's a typo. So it's actually close for both of them because you know of the whole of the dots filled in dots there so therefore there should be actually a, a bar underneath as inequality because it's closed and here all right if we plug in uh, all the, the three functions then we get our final result here and this should, again this should be a bar right here because we include the two All right, so let's look at another example of writing a rule based off of the absolute value function. So we're gonna actually focus on absolute value functions in this example. And our, our goal is to just, given a, any kind of absolute value, how do we write it as a piecewise function? So for step one, we wanna write the function in this format. This is actually the vertex form of the absolute value. So we, we're, we wanna really focus on this form. So in this case, remember that hk is the vertex. So here we have h and k, and the coordinates hk give us our, gives us our vertex. So in this case, we have f of x equals absolute value of 6x plus 18. So we want to force it so that it looks like this form here. So we're going to pull out, we're actually pull out the 6 here. I'm going to factor it out. So if I went ahead and distributed this, it should give me the original, right? 6x plus 18. And then we're going to pull out the 6. So take the 6 and pull it out. And then we got something that looks more like the a. So this is sort of like our a here. And then we want the minus there. So we're going to convert plus 3 as minus negative 3. Remember that two negatives is a plus. So then the reason we do that is because now we can identify that's our minus, so that means h has to be negative 3. And then we don't have a number on the outside, so we write it as plus 0, so that we know that that's our k. <clears throat> All right, so that means h is negative 3 and k is 0, which means our vertex is negative 3, 0. Now remember that the graph has a v-shape because it's absolute value. So therefore, there are two linear pieces, one on the left of the vertex and one on the right. So we have something that looks like this, or it could look like the upside down, depending on whether it's negative or positive. But this right here is our vertex. So that means on the left side of the vertex, you know, you have a line that goes up here. And on the right side, you have another line, another line that goes up, but in a different direction. So uh, actually, you know, this left part is decreasing and then the right part is increasing. So we get to figure out those two equations. So step two, we want to find the slope of each piece of the function by testing the x values on either side of the vertex, which is at x equals negative three. So we're going to do the we're going to do the left side of the vertex. So we're going to do the left of x equals negative three first. So we're going to pick up a number. So let x equals negative four. So if we plug in negative four into the function. Again, we're plugging it in for negative 4. When x is negative 4, we get negative 24 plus 18, which is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. So our coordinates are negative 4, comma, 6. Now let's do to the right of x equals negative 3, the right of the vertex. So let's pick an easy number like x equals 0. So plugging it in, we get 6 times 0 plus 18, which is 18 for our result. So we get 0, 18. <clears throat> All right, so continuing on with step two, notice that I wrote our, I just summarized the points that we just got. So we got negative 4, 6 on the left and 0, 18 on the right. All right, so 
we're going to use the negative 4, 6, as well as the vertex that we found earlier in order to find the slope. Remember that we're going to be using the slope formula for this. So plugging it in, to, so we're going to subtract the y's and then subtract the x's. We get a slope of negative 6. Then we're going to plug it in using y equals mx plus b. So we're going to use the point negative 3, 0. So plugging in um, negative 3 for x and 0 for y, and then negative 6 for m, we get 0 equals negative 6 times negative 3 plus b. So 0 equals 18 plus b. So b, if we solve for b, you're going to get negative 18. So now we're going to plug this into y equals mx plus b. Again, it's not written down here. So we're going to plug it into y equals mx plus b. So that's b. Again, we said our m is negative 6. And that's how we get negative 6 plus 8 or minus 18. Now let's look at the right side. So let's pick. We're going to use the point that we chose here and then the vertex again. So plug it into the slope formula. Again, subtract the y's, then subtract the x's on the bottom. We get 6 for the slope. Plugging this into y equals mx plus b, and then choosing one of those points, let's choose the vertex point. So x is negative 3, and y is 0, m is 6. So we get 0 equals 6 times negative 3 plus b, or 0 equals negative 18 plus b. So solving for b, b has to be 18. So plugging in into slope-intercept form, we know b is 18, <clears throat> and the slope is 6. So we get y equals 6x plus 18. So now plugging these into the function rule, we see that we have negative 6 minus 18 went uh, to the left of negative 3. This is to the left. And we have x, 6x plus 18 when x is to the right of negative 3. So this is to the right. And that's our piecewise function. Go ahead and pause the video and try the following problems first. All right, so let's look at the first uh, part of the question. Net, uh, y equals absolute value of negative 5x minus 10. Again, the first step, we want to identify hk using uh, this format right here. So we had to force this, we had to force this to look like this. So rewriting it, uh, we're going to pull out, actually factor out the negative 5. And when we do that, we get negative 5 times x plus 2. Again, if you're struggling with this, remember that if you distribute the negative 5, you should get back to the original. All right, so notice I also added the plus zero on the outside. Uh, and that's because I, wanna, I, I know that there's nothing on the outside and I gotta match it with K. <clears throat> All right, so then I'm going ahead and rewrote plus two as minus negative two because now the minus is matched here. So that means H has to be negative two and K has to be zero. So those are my two uh, coordinates. So my vertex is negative two, zero. Now that we have the vertex, we need to test on the left side and, and the right side. So we need to test each side of x equals negative 2. So let's choose the left side first. Let's choose x equals negative 3 because negative 3 is to the left of negative 2. So we plug it into the function here. When x is negative 3, we get 5 times negative 3 um, minus 10. So we get 15 minus 10, which is going to be 5. So our coordinates are negative 3, comma, 5. Right, so now we got, we're going to use our vertex, which is the negative 2, 0, and we're going to use the coordinates that we just found to find the slope. So plugging it into the slope formula, remember, subtract y's, then subtract x's, we get negative 5. Plug in the slope and the point, let's choose the vertex as our point and plug it in so x is going to be negative 2 y is going to be 0 slope is going to be negative 5 we get 0 equals negative 5 times negative 2 plus b so we get 10 plus b so we got to solve for b we get b is negative 10. so plugging in the slope and in the b that we just found into y equals mx plus b gives us y equals negative 5x minus 10. 
Now let's look at the right side. Let's choose x equals 0 since 0 is to the right of negative 2. So plugging in 0 into the function, remember this 5x here, so plugging in 0 there, we get negative 5 times 0 minus 10. So we get absolute value of negative 10. Remember, absolute value makes everything positive. So if it's negative 10 on the inside, it's going to be positive for the final result. So our coordinates are 0, 10. Now we're going to use the vertex as well as the coordinate that we just found to find the slope. So remember, subtract the y, so 10 minus 0, and then 0 minus negative 2. So in this case, we're going to find the slope of 5 from the slope form. <clears throat> and then the coordinates, we're going to choose um, our coordinates for our vertex right here, negative 2, 0. So this is x, this is y, and then m is 5. So we get 0 equals 5 times negative 2 plus b, 0 equals negative 10 plus b. So solving for b, we get b equals 10. So now we're going to plug in the slope of 5, and then the b is 10 into the slope-intercept form. So we get y equals 5x plus 10. So now we're going to plug this in for our final result. Uh, so our two equations are negative 5x minus 10 and 5x plus 10. And then this is on the left side. So on the left side, we get that equation. And on the right side of the vertex, we get the bottom equation. All right. <clears throat>